Hello, Maria here. I'm gonna show you how I make these little talismans. It's very simple and it's fun. So, uh, they're all different looking, but I'm using Super Sculpey. And it is very strong. It um, bakes just like regular uh, polymer clay. So, I don't uh, press these like super thin. Maybe about, uh, I'd say about uh, an, an eighth of an inch or so. You don't want to make it too thin. And then I will use a mold, a face mold. I bought these on uh, Etsy. And uh, the trick is to, to get it pretty much straight. Turns out okay. Looks kind of severe, <laughs> the expression, but uh, that will change when you paint it. I will. The nose was not very pronounced, so what I do, I just pinch the nose a little bit here. And I use one of my ball uh, tools. This is the finest one I have and this I have this for if I need bigger holes and indentations. So I, I'm gonna have to add some nostrils and the little dip there didn't show up when I made the mold. I can so just make the lips a little more pronounced here. So, and maybe I'll just make her look a little happier with some upturn here at the edges. The nose did not turn out great. You can always redo it. These are little talismans. You can uh, press an affirmation in with some letter stamps or just uh, write them later. Here I, I, I just cut out some words from uh, one of those. I think it was, uh, what's his name? Tim Holtz um, word. Uh, collections and you can also just cut out words out of magazines and papers and books whatever and then I need to make some um, holes here to where I would hang hang the hanger to loop some metal and if I want to add the uh, little doodads at the bottom and that's always fun. So, gotta look at it and see where the holes would look the best. Try and get them like a straight. Straight across here. And then make some holes on the bottom. I think I'll make one, two, three on this one. And uh, you have to press through a couple of times and then kind of s smooth out the, the ridges on the back. 
So there you go. You can uh, could leave it like that, put some words on it, or add some uh, embellishments. I have a couple that are ready to go in the oven. So I made just some like uh, some greenery here, just some stripes or like to to make some texture and here I added some like suggesting hair where I did some depth you know pushed in some stripes in here to where you can get some nice uh, differential when you put paint in it and then just added that I'm gonna put some uh, probably some lettering on there so you have to kind of think of what you want to do with it um, if you want to put some embellishment on before you bake it you have to to uh, use some baking bond and, uh, and put that between the layers of your clay otherwise it might not stick on there really well. I had a, a mold that I made of some metal corners I was thinking maybe that would look good and try it. So. I don't know. We would have to cut it out. I don't think the mold is very detailed. So sometimes you just have to try different things. You also have to keep in mind that any material you use for embellishments will have to survive the oven so metal can be pressed into the, the clay of course some metal whatever you want it to do with it and that's kind of not the look I'm going for I don't know actually what I'm going for here quite so I was thinking maybe Here on this one, I I just used the rubber stamps, and here I just used uh, one of these ball tools to drag to make some hair. It was pretty nice actually. So I might just do that here, just to get some interest. I don't really have anything that I can uh, press into the clay at the moment that I can think of. And uh, you have to, when you press stuff like this, you see how it makes these things, little things stick up out of the clay. You want to kind of smooth that out. One can also make little brooches like this, and I would have made it smaller, but uh, this uh, I'm making it more like a wall, wall decor, and I would put some words on it. So. Maybe yeah, I just put uh, some of this baking bond.
This just adds a little interest. All right, I think that's enough because I'm going to do like a hanger at the top and uh, some stuff hanging down. So I don't want to have too much going on. Okay, I will be back once this is baked. So the second video after I baked the clay disappeared or maybe it didn't record. I don't know. So here's the finished project I will go over how I painted this and it's not hard and also this is um, twigs that I got from the backyard it's oak and I scraped off all the bark and sanded, sanded it and um, put some olive oil on it and it's very smooth so you could see if you can find some really strong twigs on the ground and that adds a natural flavor to the artwork. So I don't have any more unfinished clay and I, I'm not ready to make more right now. So I'm just going to explain. You start with the darkest color paint that would be the burnt umber. And I took a, a pretty stiff brush and um, you go into all the crevices, you know, all these patterns I made and little stripes and holes and around and in the crevices like this because it adds shadow to the face and it makes it stand out more. And uh, you let that dry, and then I went over it with, um, <clears throat> we have the raw sienna. So I went over these. This one, I just put some uh, unbleached titanium white on top of the dark umber, the burnt umber. And then I uh, put a little bit of oxide, yellow oxide on top just brush that on and uh, put orange on these and over here and then I put some of the brown diluted umber brown paint over them to make them look aged so <clears throat> then you have uh, like you get this patina. Now I put a little bit of um, unbleached titanium white here just to give it a little interest. And uh, the rest of it, I just put several layers <clears throat> and then I wiped it off. So let me show you on some other piece of, let's see. Well, I have this really old uh, face here that's not going to do anything, so what I would do is, that's a little much, but um, you, well, baked clay is not absorbent, so it's very easy to just wipe it off, and you, you keep doing this till you have um kind of the i you know as much as you want on there depending how how grungy you want to to make it look and then i used the um, umber <coughs> i mean <laughs> the raw sienna sorry On top of that, so I wanted my surroundings to be the raw sienna. It doesn't stick real well on top of this gold paint here. 
But the, the secret, I always say this, the secret to uh, making something look dimensional and alive is layers, many layers. And you rub it off till you feel confident about what you want it to look like. Here I could say I wanted to save this gold, I could just leave some of the shining through and it would, um, but everything kind of disappears here into this. So I would put some more dark around the edges. This is maybe a not good example, but uh, I wanted you to just kind of get the idea of the technique. See, you can put some water on a rag and wipe off as much as you wanted to. Say you wanted to have it, this looks like those cherubs in churches that they kind of dark and grungy and then you get the white through there. And if you don't like it, just put some more paint to grunge it back up. And that's the whole secret to that. You just keep playing with it. So here you can see I did play with the shadows over here and uh, make and around there just to make sure it would really stand out. And here is on top some unbleached white titanium just to again make more shadow and light like depth to the face and I did the, the same to this but no white on here the face blends in better with the background and here I, I did add some more dark to the eyes to make them more prominent and a bit of unbleached titanium white on the nose and the forehead and that makes the face really stand out so you got a little variation it's uh, good to to play with it and if you don't like it you can always wet the rag and rub rub it all off and start over before it's dry you know you can rub it off even when it's dry so I could sand this and make it more uh, have more contrast between the say the the leaves and the face, but I like it like that. And I then painted the backs with the raw sienna just to finish it off. And this one is totally the same principle. Then I just put some yarn through here and ribbons, and these are handmade um, <clears throat> clay beads that I made and painted. But you can put see my precious stones, crystals, you know, whatever you want to add on there. And then I I took it says here I choose to shine, so you can cut words out of magazines if you don't have anything like this. These are the Tim Holtz word. So these are just words. You see I used a lot of them. And they also come in uh, in craft color. And um, these are sentences and you can uh, you know, cut out words if you don't want to use the whole thing. And here we have black at the back. So those uh, you can buy online. They're actually useful. So I put uh, own your dreams. That gives a little purpose to the artwork too, to just uh, have a positive affirmation. And this, like I said, the twig I use to tie it up. I would I put quite a bit of glue on the stick here and then I use the uh, fake sinew which is super strong I mean you can't break it you have to cut it and it's a bit sticky so what you do you can wrap it 
and uh, then I put some glue on the knot here so it wrapped several times I will put a sawtooth hanger on the back because I'll, otherwise one would have to hang it on a, like a big long nail which wouldn't work so choose to shine and uh, that just makes a good gift for somebody right own your dreams and this one doesn't have anything so I'm gonna put a wire hanger I think on this one with some beads maybe and this one I will do more of the ribbons here and I do have a long I will put that in it kind of blends with with the hair so either way okay well I hope you get the gist of how to finish the talisman when you um, have baked the clay so Thank you so much for watching.